All right, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. It is 6.17 p.m. All right, um, first item on the agenda, if there are any announcements, I don't believe I had anything um, as far as upcoming uh, events or anything. Note. Okay. Um, all right, then we'll go ahead and move on to the approval of minutes. Um, everyone received the minutes from April 27th. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at those? And are there any questions or edits at this time? I did not receive any over email. Okay, hearing none. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes from April 27th? We have seven. Yes. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get a beat behind. Motion yes. to approve. Okay, second. Second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, minutes pass. All right, at that point, we will open up the floor to any public comments. Um, if you are in person, please come up to the podium um, and you have five minutes. So my name is Jane Burns. I was one of the few folks who uh, uh, completed 27 presentations in 2021 in front of this Wichita uh, City Council in order to form this board. Um, the board uh, ordinance uh, really provided no uh, funding, no uh, accountability, no roadmap for the sustainability efforts. So, um, uh, we relied, or the city manager asked um, the Environmental Finance Center at Wichita State University, which is a subset of the Environmental Protection Agency. He, he asked the EFC to create a report, which they did, um, 180 pages. It's electronic. I haven't seen it in print at all. Um, and I must say, I had a great deal of skepticism about it, um, um, it especially uh, the, the EFC was asked to evaluate uh, projects and programs on uh, to raise the score of something called the American Council of Energy Efficiency, <laughs> the ACEEE. -E -E the score of Wichita at the time and still is, uh, is 99 out of 100, 99 out of 100 largest cities. Um, the EFC report turns it out to be extremely valuable. It was released in uh, March. I learned about it in April and, and now it's May. It's ready to go. In fact, I went to the city council a couple of weeks ago and said, it's our roadmap. It's our roadmap of what to do. Uh, I have um, an unknown entity printed out uh, what I deemed as the most um, uh, usable uh, pages, another 50 pages. It's in full color. Um, uh, from a printer to, uh, to uh, help us wade through. The 180 pages is a lot of introduction and a lot of references. So I, I'm gonna distribute the, the, the wonderful 50 plus pages that are relevant to every uh, area that we're looking at. Um, it covers, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, um, energy efficiency, renewable energy and low carbon fuels, built environment, 
water and wastewater systems, community and individual actions, transportation, my own personal favorite, and green spaces. And then it reshuffles it, uh, these, uh, these programs and um, projects, uh, reshuffles them into 15 bundles. They have a total of uh, 123 um, uh, projects that they reshuffled into uh, other areas such as greenhouse gas emissions, renewable energy, sustainable purchasing, green building, water saving. Um, I'm gonna pass them out in a minute, but I want uh, to tell you that the EFC went to a great deal of trouble to score each of these uh, projects and policies for, for their impact on our economy. Are they cost effective? Um, the impact on the environment, are they worthwhile to pursue? And do they benefit society, us, real people? So their score, they all get scores from 0.5 to three. That is, some are very cost effective. Um, and there is a cost uh, analysis with it with each of them. 63 initiatives have an initial invest, investment of less than 50,000. One initiative was identified as zero cost, and uh, seven have an initial investment of more than $2 million, but that's another story. <laughs> that is, these are perfect places to start. Uh, the ephemeral uh, electronic uh, connection it is hard to follow. I hope you will agree um, that uh, these are useful in your endeavor. Um, if you are amenable, I eventually would like to join this board, um, depending on its progress. I, I will pass these out with your uh, approval. I have um, actually 14 copies. I don't know how many. So those folks online are gonna have to <laughs> wait till next month or look at it electronically. Um, are there 14 members yet? Um, there are not 14 members sat, um, but we can always, I can hold on to them for print them as well. You'd print them? You'd print them as well. If they would prefer um, a hard copy. <laughs> Generally don't, don't do it as a rule, but um, absolutely you have these here. Um, These are the usable pages. There's lots of background. You know, academics do that, right? <laughs> These are the pick up and use projects, programs, policies, and potential partnerships. Very, I see them as very useful. So I'll pass them out. Just a second. Uh, you spoke with the, uh, you, you attended the city council budget meeting. Today. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, I did. And uh, you mentioned that, you know, you had this report that the city manager had asked him to produce and, and would, how did they respond to? No, uh, no, actually, I just put it in front of each person's place. <laughs> it was a budget meeting and there wasn't public input. So I just laid exactly the packet that I'm passing out now in front of each city council person. So, so, and by the way, that budget is planned out. There's no provision here, any place for sustainability issues. So that's the next project, right? Getting respect for sustainability projects and funding. So thank you. Thank you. So this is for you. And those are the pages that I see as most useful. Um, and I'll keep the other copies until next. Yeah. Hello, I'll be brief. I probably just want to uh, introduce myself. My name is Holger Meyer. I know some of you. I'm eager to get to know those of you I don't know yet. 
I've attended some of these meetings by Zoom. This is the first meeting I'm making in person. Uh, so it's nice to be here, you know, sometimes on a, a weekday evening with just a handful of people in a room it may seem uh, exhausting and uh, like there's little interest in general, but I want to voice that uh, I know for myself and many I know that there's great appreciation for the Sustainability Integration Board having been formed and uh, people are watching what is happening and are eager for progress to be made. Um, I'm a faculty member at Wichita State. I'm a professor of physics. Uh, that means usually I'm very busy, but this summer over the next couple of months until four classes start, I uh, you know, uh, will have time and I'm really looking forward to maybe uh, you know, bringing some of the initiatives that have already been discussed uh, maybe some of the things that are in Jane's uh, suggestions forward uh, to have concrete proposals to the council as soon as possible and to quickly have a tangible impact uh, on what is happening in Wichita. There are so many things to do. I don't want to even make any particular suggestions. I want to kind of run with what you are coming forward with and support that, but we've got to get going. Uh, climate change is worsening, and uh, it seems like one city may not be able to do much about it, but that's, of course, a fallacy. Uh, every city has to act now, and so the more we can do, the sooner we can do it, the better we'll be all off. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it looks like we don't have any more uh, members of the public, so we'll go ahead and close the comment period. Um, so we'll move into um, our discussion. Um, I know there had been a lot of questions before about um, the committee structure, the time requirements. Um, I know Laura wanted to um, lead in a lot of in a lot of those discussions, so. You know, before we jump into that, I just want to get a progress update um, from those of you who were able to meet um, with committees and just hear about how is it going, how's the conversation progressing, what are you finding out about people's priorities, um, what roadblocks are you running into, anything like that. And I'll open the floor to anyone in person or online to throw your opinions out. Do you know how many committees were able to meet? Um, I do not. Um, I did meet with uh, Green Space. Um, I know um, Energy Efficiency and Renewables met. Um, I know your, your group has met the Waste and Recycling. Um, Community engagement. We, the, uh, Laura Lombard and Lauren uh, Clary, she was on there now. We, we met and just had a sort of discussion about where we would like to go. So we've started. Um, have you have you guys been having good participation from the public in these in these meetings? We haven't tried to have a okay. public meeting yet. Well, um, I've but when I tell you that we're having a meeting, you put it on the sustainability page. Is that what you do? No, um, I haven't done that. Um, I'm not sure how to do something like that if I just because if I tell my friends they're gonna they're gonna know they're gonna know I'll tell them what I found out they're not gonna come. I mean we're all everybody I know is already at the max mm -hmm. for the amount of things that they get. Right. They're not liable to come. And we've met twice now for the waste and recycling. And neither time did we have members of the public. Um, but we've always managed to have at least four of us meetings. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's important to note that everybody involved is technically a member of the public. So they're not, it's not staff. Okay. Um, <laughs> so even if you're pulling in subject matter experts from other organizations, uh, you know, that's important too. We want people who know what they're talking about. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things, at least that I've um, realized is that 
um, yeah, engaging people in these smaller group settings is really challenging. There are a lot of people who say they're interested and then don't um, show up, don't participate. So um, it seems to me like there needs to be more, more strategizing as far as how we do that. Um, this whole um, website um, remodel that's supposed to be done, I'm not sure yes. um, happening. But um, I'm hoping that will help in you know, organizing things better, having it easier to find. Um, I would like to um, have a schedule going forward. I know that on the board page, um, our schedule is now up for these regular meetings. I post on the sustainability page as a board. So um, you know, trying to um, reach as many people as possible. Um, now, you know, if there's a set schedule or something, it's a little easier to post on you know, social media of come join us, you know, the second Sunday at the library um, each month to discuss this specific topic. So there's a lot of just figuring out how to go. So would the city do that on their page on Facebook? Yes, so we do we do postings for um, you know boards and uh, because it's you know technically posted in the city, we uh, try and get involved that way. Um, I'm not sure um, how frequently, but I did check on that to make sure that, that was okay, and I said yeah. We can do that. Uh, so we can we can do that, um, and I know it's it's challenging because you know we've been talking about is are all of these groups all at once. The correct structure um, and everything like that. So, um, we'll we'll get there. I think um, I don't want to uh, jump the gun with um, what Laura wants to uh, discuss as far as um, you know, strategy and everything like that. So that's why I'm just trying to you know get an idea of what kind of things are you guys talking about right now. So, Lori, it seems like you you've had a lot of um, projects um, or ideas come up. Um, is there anything that you want to update the, the group with right now? Well, the first time we met, we talked about compost, making it citywide so everybody has access. Um, and we have um, Jesse Marks from Nudge Compost, who is a member of this of the committee. And he was going to look into some grant money. Well, a grant that he had in mind, he could have gotten last year and the year before but couldn't raise any support with the city. He couldn't even get a response from anyone. So I said, well, now you've got some of us here that can help you with that. So he went back and the grant was over last year. He couldn't even apply for it. Um, but he's, he's is working on schools, which is not city, but he's working on setting up office in school. He's already got a few schools. So he's making some progress on his own, not necessarily with us. Uh, but as if, when we met, when I learned that the, the trash um, colors had an agreement with the city that was 10 years long, which I didn't know, um, and that it's up in August, that's moved to the top of what we want to do because we are waste and recycle. Um, so we met again a week ago and my co Heisel joined us. And this is a big concern of his as well. Um, and so we're working on, at, if, if we can't get anything done by then, which is August, which is like two months from now, um, we do want to at least make sure that if there is some sort of contract that no one's following, that the contract does not expire in 10 years. There's a contract right now that no one is obeying. Not a single hauler is following it. They're not. Um, and there's a hauler that's probably going to go out because they have completely stopped picking up people's trash. Um, there's another one of the major haulers that has turned into a disaster. I don't know if it's connections or management, but it's one of the major ones. Um, so they may have trouble getting into a whole trash franchise thing too. They're not even willing to pick up trash on a regular basis. For their existing customers. So, and that's something that they're facing down there. 
down south where Mike is too. And I'm hearing it from up north. And District 1 breakfast, there are people there that are like, they're having a bad experience. The contract that they have now has them offering but not requiring recycling. It's single stream recycling. And they're supposed to offer two different size trash bins. A big one, 95 gallon, small one, 65 gallon. Many of them just don't let people know that they have that if they have it. Some of them just don't have it. They're not following the, the, writ, the contract that they were signed on to. So it sounds like there's some enforcement issues potentially. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm not familiar with their practices on the ground. I'm somewhat familiar with um, the contracts. Um, uh, it, it's a problem, and that problem can be over in August. But I, that's not enough time to get this in process and get this going. Um, so um, one of the things that Mike said he was going to have the manager do was the forum that you guys have. Do a right. forum that is a poll that asks, what do you think of your trash service? Do you think it's too expensive? Do you think, you know, all these things? And I actually did a poll just on my Facebook and on some of the other Facebook pages that I monitor or have belonged to or moderate. Um, and I just asked people if they're happy with their trash. What would they change? And are they happy with what they're paying? Um, you have and I suggest that you ask whether people have lived in other cities. I moved here 25 years ago and discovered what Wichita does with trash, and it's just insane. Anybody who's lived anywhere else thinks Wichita is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. All right. And a lot of what I got from people was it would be nice to not have more than one truck on my street every week. Or have trash dumpsters out and ask people, do you want trash dumpsters lining your street every day of the week? And that's one of the exactly. suggestions in that exactly. see. Uh, it is, I know, I know, yeah. I've seen it. And, and alley pickups, by, if, we're, if we're talking trash, please put alley pickups in there. That's what alleys are for. We, well, and we do have some in mind are alleys yeah. because that's where their driveway is. Yeah. It's in the alley, not on the It's a smaller truck, and a lot of the companies won't do it. A or if they do do it, they charge you extra, of course, wow. but a lot of companies won't do it. But that can just be won't. part of whatever the agreement that they come with. Yeah. In neighborhoods so, with alleys, there ought to be an option for alley. Yeah. yeah. So right now, I think um, I've got my list of responses, but they're all just person by person. Um, but some people are happy. Fine. Kansas trash is stuck in the 50s. Zero to recycling. We're really not recycling here. We say we are, but it's not, it's not going anywhere. Um, several people said that they share trash with someone else. Which is illegal. Yes, but, but they do. They don't make enough trash to make it worth it. And so they just all combine. I got it's that illegal. more than it's illegal. Every household has to have trash by law. And every commercial <laughs> entity. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah, See, I, mean, I know. It, it's crazy because some people, one of my neighbors doesn't have any money. He cannot afford trash still be able to eat so she doesn't she just takes it to her boyfriends perfectly <laughs> rational i mean the law is intended to make sure that people just don't dump it in their yard and right but but <laughs> the way it's written that's not what it's achieving another thing that we talked about a lot was also the need for a bulk waste day um mike was thinking every six months i'd like to see it way more often than that because if you and uh, I mean I interpret for cities on the phone all the time for people calling in about their trash callers all the time and they people call constantly and they have a monthly bulk pickup that's free people are going okay what day is it going to be on this month oh right okay yeah and you had to put it out by the street like you do your trash cart put it right by the cart and, and they give them the whole spiel on the phone and that the illegal dumping problem that we have in Wichita was just severe. This could put an end to 
are next to putting it into it. So this is part of what we want to include, but that's what we're talking about with Mike too, with, with um, Councilmember Hoheisel. Well, what he would like to see and what we think would be valuable. Yeah, I mean, we just had our neighborhood pick up in Delano and they do it neighborhood by neighborhood, but that's a volunteer effort. And it's just, again, it's insane that that's, that's how we handle bulk trash in Wichita. It's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. And we don't have to pay for it because the city, the city and I think the county also helps pay for it. But it's, it's, it's it, we have a trash problem. Serious trash this, problem. This is still, if I can chime in with something. So this current trash contract came out of something that Jack Brown, uh, Elizabeth Abla, I and several others worked on a decade ago, which was, yeah called WIRE, which was Wichita Initiative to Renew the Environment. It was an EPA grant funded project that was done through the KU School of Medicine. We ran around and asked the community, what was your top environmental concerns? And, and trash was one of those. Um, and we took that to council. We tried to go to the franchise trash service. However, the council members at the time said, no, we want a market driven free market decision on trash. I mean, at that yes. time there was like 35 trash dollars. So um, the number is much smaller than it was even then. And that was yes. in 2011, right? So, um, and then also that we couldn't force people to recycle. We only could ask the haulers to offer it. So that was the kind of the compromise that kind of led us to where we're at now. It was better than we had at that point in time. Um, that's why we're at the point now where the contract is, is ending because we started in 2011 and the contract came in 2012. Yeah, I remember a lot of that, Cody. I was serving on the district advisory board at the time. And when we heard it, our DAP board said, yes, franchise. And I think many of the DAP boards probably did say that, but it, it did, didn't happen. But I think that now the council has changed a lot and I think that we, it's time to get this started. I don't know that this can be put together in two months. So I'll just jump in, um, kind of going off what Lori and Philip are both saying. Um, you know, um, so we've been having some internal discussions about this as well. Um, just to give you some background, uh, and I know um, Bob owes you an email on that. Uh, be, I, I've gotten that already. It should be. Yeah, soon. <laughs> Waiting. <laughs> but just, yeah, just to let you know, you know, when it was established, um, the requirements went into um, city ordinance. So um, the contracts are following city ordinance. So, you know, if we're looking at changes or, you know, more aggressive, well, I think we're aggressive in this context, but, um, you know, stronger regulations or something that is going to be done through ordinance and then the contracts will have to follow. Um, so just, just to give you that little bit of background there, this whole, all of the um, conversations that happened back then, I know that there was, um, and I think Bob had mentioned this too, that they wanted, they wanted to move forward with this um, and there was a lot of backlash um, and even with trying to make some changes and it was almost going to go through um, was still backlash and so um, that didn't end up happening so and that was because of public opinion however you know that was 10 years ago public opinion changes so there's still an opportunity potentially for change I'm not saying this can't happen um, but I think that's why there's this concern of um, making sure that this is what people want. And it sounds like, you know, based on Philip, what you were talking about, uh, people do care about this stuff. Um, but just, just to give you that, that context of um, there needs to be um, a public backing um, in whatever effort goes forward. Um, so I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be too, too worried about the timeline because any ordinance change will then, um, you know, have to update these, these contracts. Okay. So, so the 10 years are up in August, so we don't have to worry about that really. It can just kind of slide until there's a new ordinance. 
Well, so any, any current contract will still stand, but any ordinance change will require people to follow the ordinance at that point. Okay. So just, just based on how um, you know, any ordinance works, um, people will be beholden to that um, unless there's some sort of laws saying that um, people are grandfathered into the old rules, which probably is not something that will not work with this. Um, but just, yeah, just to give you a little context um, there. Uh, so that's something um, to pursue. That's um, a larger, uh, probably more extensive conversation. To have. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So on, on that topic, uh, do they have, can they uh, amend an ordinance or do they have to have a new ordinance? Um, I believe you can, you can revise. And that's a majority vote? Um, I'm not sure. I do need to check. Well, the council has to pass it though so council will have to pass it but i don't i'm not sure if it's a two-thirds majority or if it can just stand as a, a simple um more than half i don't know if there's any specific um provisions for amendments versus just uh, ordinance passes um, sometimes so state statutes cool. require different majorities a two-thirds or a three-quarter right. right yeah but this is a city ordinance Yes, correct? correct. Yeah, I look forward to, to seeing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. what you find out about that, that'd be great. Uh, Susan Erlenwein is also on this committee, so she's been valuable for us. Right, with, with the, us the, about the some of the other cities in the county. Um, she says people who have franchise trash, and half of them have 22 cities, I think. 20 cities, Central County, like that. Nobody knows that. And I was shocked when she said that. But she's like, 12 of them have already franchised trash. They've gone with a single home. We're too big for that. One of the, mm, you could trans franchise by sections, quadrants, or something. That, exactly. What, one point I, I would like you to also make when you're making your arguments is this is, again, a climate change issue. Every one of those stinking trucks, oh, yeah. every day, spewing diesel fuel yeah. and and they're wearing our i mean a sign and, and we pay for the street repair for seven trucks per day for every street instead of one it's insane exactly yeah no we're we're on we're we're on that page let me tell you okay good we got it um but one of the things i also would like to ask those people who raise a stink and i don't think it was the public i think it was a few select people who raised a stink and they i would like their opinion now what do they think of their trash now, 10 years later? What are they paying? I'm shocked at what some people are paying in this city. $100? Or we're paying even more than that. It's just amazing to me. What does that cost? And it shouldn't. It should cost half of that, less than half. It would, if we can accomplish this anytime soon. So yeah, it's going to take some time though. We're not certainly not ready to do that now, but I do want to see how that forum um, pull yeah. comes out so we can get an idea. Um, Cause that will go citywide where this is just people that I know. And who did you say uh, you're working on? You're working with that? Was there a staff member to helping? City, city council member, Ho Heisel. Oh, Ho Heisel. Yeah, um, I know they've had a lot of success with engagement on um, the golf. Um, project. And so um, they're looking for some other um, projects to um, continue public participation on this, on this forum. Um, so I'm excited to see it. I didn't, I didn't do anything with the golf one because I don't play golf. Right. And this is a fairly new tool. So we want to, we want to make, we want people to know about it and we want to raise awareness. That this is a tool they can use in addition to, you know, Q and A's and um, town hall meetings, you know, what have you. So um, if we can use this and help bring awareness to and use it for other things down the road, that's going to be really helpful too. As I know, that's probably a tool we want to use for um, uh, engagement of many other groups in education. So got a, an established relationship with the Eagle? Because I remember them doing 
a, like a big Sunday spread on exactly the issue of Wichita compared to all the other Central County cities, cash hauling costs. Yes, Dion. I mean, I know Dion well. The, there you go. And see, but if you can get the Eagle to do an article and mention forums site. Forum, yeah. Yeah, once that's website, set up, that would be good. That would generate, I think, a lot of response. Yeah. I'll ask Dion who to contact. But yeah, that was Sarah Spicer, probably. It was. Sarah's not here. She got a job in New York City. I loved her. <laughs> we got to know each other really well. So, um, so you did a green space meeting? Yes. Um, I only had people show up. Oh, but okay. um, Carol came, Carol and then Krista is with the pollinator um oh yeah Kansas native plant society yes good um so it was a it was a small group um but uh, plenty of good ideas uh, pulled up the full hour uh talking about different things um so some of the things that were identified at that meeting um as priorities were um not only you know caring for our existing green spaces but creating these green corridors between our, our parks um, and especially in a high concrete area, uh, high concrete areas, um, so that we're not creating barriers uh, for wildlife, um, native species, um, and it also to encourage um, wild growing and native plant growing. I know that's something we've talked about before and some of the, some of the struggles there, especially with um, mowing contractors and things like that. Um, so that would have to be, um, you know, a, a considerable effort to uh, make sure that these are are known as, you know, protected areas. Um, but um, let's see. Yeah, essentially finding areas where we can um, add spaces to help maintain uh, our natural ecosystem um, and help with water runoff and other issues as well. Um, with that, we also talked about um, tree canopy, which has been a huge topic of concern lately, um, and the co benefits that uh, trees have, especially when we're looking at uh, and, uh, climate change. Um, so we, we did talk about um, vacant lots a little bit. If the city is uh, inventorying those, uh, how they determine uh, whether or not those are going to be sold to uh, developers or, or other uh, parties, and what impact that has on you know uh, green spaces for people who may not have access to farther away um, areas. Um, Harold had mentioned one instance of a uh, pocket park. Um, that uh, was sold by this uh, sold by the city. Uh, I'm not sure how much of the land had a pocket park on it, but included it. Um, and so that's something that he personally uh, was not a fan of. Um, and so looking at it was scary just having you say that because my neighborhood has a pocket park. I mean, just hearing that was like. <gasps> Right, so you know, we've taken out of ours. Look at what the process is in identifying those, um, and um, how they prioritize those as far as um, selling or using them. Um, we also um, realized that you know we need more data. Um, the canopy assessment was done in 2017, uh, 2018. Um, I think is when it was published. Um, but we do know that there's canopy loss uh, year to year. And so we don't know exactly what it looks like now. Um, it, it, what, what about that NASA study? Well, I, was gonna say hmm? that yeah, I mean, wasn't yeah. they gonna do exactly that? So I'm not sure if they are, um, if they're just gonna be using our canopy data um, or if they're gonna be using um, their own satellite data. Um, the project does start in a couple of weeks and I have a meeting with them next week. 
So I'm hoping to clear some of that up and provide an update to you guys. Um, we do want to, we would like to be able to see a difference um, or a change over the years. And then um, if possible, also see a projection um, so that we can see, you know, with, without any changes, what is our heat going to look like? What is our land cover going to look like? Um, which will hopefully um, spur some action. Um, but I will, I will get back to you guys on that. Um, um, I'll get some more details as far as what exactly they're using as far as uh, data and what those deliverables look like. Um, the a, part of it. Oh, sorry, just a, a heads up. Wichita has extremely Byzantine park ownership rules, depending on when the property was originally bought and by whom and how. Sometimes the park board has authority over whether parkland is sold and sometimes the city council does. I don't remember the details anymore. I remember consulting many, many lawyers back in the day when, when a years previous mayor sold a chunk of park to one of his donors. But anyway, um, the, the pocket park issue, just keep that in the back of your mind that who has authority is the first thing you're going to have to establish because it ends in Wichita. That's correct. The park board holds the deed to about 80% of the park property. Okay. Um, we also talked about um, educating the public about using um, both public and personal safety, incorporate native plants, um, so homes, uh, churches, um, schools, uh, making sure people know why this is important, uh, and obviously providing um, shade in already established green spaces to encourage people to use them, uh, to encourage people to um, bike or uh, walk. And then we also talked about um, potentially engaging the public to see what the interest would be on a community food garden. Um, I know there's been interest in putting one in Riverside potentially. There might already be one there, um, but that would have to be a huge um, effort multiple multiple people to get this off the ground to see if they actually want it, to see who would be responsible for it and maintaining and um, watering, um, pruning, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then you know, who does it belong to or meet the rules of it essentially. Um, so that could be another potential forum sort of um, topic or idea generation. Um, if there are people who are knowledgeable, if there are people who specifically say, yes, there's a space here and we want to do this, and then pulling the right people together to make, to make that happen. Um, so that's sort of a, a snapshot. Um, plenty, of, plenty of things to tackle there. Um, but I think the idea is to take care of our current green spaces, more tree planting, and then um, incorporate these smaller spaces as well to connect our. I'm remembering at one point, and it's been several years ago, the county, uh, the city was working on the outskirts of the city to do some nice green space between Derby and Wichita, between Andover and Wichita, between Mays and Wichita. But I heard a lot about it there for a while, and then suddenly nothing. I'm not too familiar with that, um, but I wonder if that was with the Sedgwick County Extension office, because I think a lot of that could work. I thought that sounded really cool, so they would keep some green space instead of butting the cities up to one another. And I, but I don't remember where that came from. I think I heard about it at a district one breakfast. Um, okay, um, and Esther, are you still there? I heard that you were having a meeting. Esther or Tammy, do you, um, one of you would like to chime in and let us know how that one went? 
sure this is Tammy. I'll, I'll update some and then Esther, please fill in, you know, any of the uh, holes I'm missing. So yeah, Esther and I had a virtual meeting on energy efficiency, but you know, again, it wasn't incredibly well attended. Um, there were just a couple people that joined us and it was clear that there was a little bit of confusion in that, you know, the, the list that we had from Wichita State really focused on on the city and the properties and the and decisions that, that they could impact within their own operations. And it was clear that the people on the call were really interested in what could you do for a community? So there was a lot of discussion really about what, you know, what our focus was because um, there was a lot of, you know, again, if you go back to the list um, that Jane mentioned earlier, um, that it was really good and comprehensive, that we got from Wichita State that's really a roadmap. It is looking at what can the city do from their own operations perspective. And, you know, with that, there was, you know, really great, um, really great suggestions, really um, things that that were looked really worthwhile with uh, just doing an it like an inventory on small motor equipment. Um, that was one that was really the top of our list because it seemed manageable. Um, it seemed like a good, uh, easy win, you know, that we could do. But then the, the community members that we talked to, their focus was really on how do we help, um, you know, low-income marginalized communities ensure that a lower percentage of their income is going to utilities. So we, there was a lot of conversation, you know, again, just sort of defining what what we what our purpose was, where we were going with it. But it it, it it, it was good. Again, I think one of the top things that, that, that Esther and I really liked from that list, a good, easy, quick win is the inventory um, of the small motor equipment to electric. What can we do within the city? And then, you know, outside of that, again, discussion on how can we help with um, low income communities, with energy efficiency, with weatherization, how do we get that, uh, at, you know, at that level where it can be impactful. Um, Esther, please, yeah, jump in and add anything you would like to add. I think you pretty much covered most of it, but yeah, there is a lot of focus on like what we can do for lower income communities and um, which I'm not sure how, like what initiatives we have, like, I guess pre, set out that we could focus on, but it's definitely something to think about. Tammy or, or Esther, who were the other people that came to your committee? Um, I, I don't have the name in front of me. I'm sorry, I know he was the guy, he was from Black Hills Energy. Um, But I, I don't have, sorry, I, let me find, see if I can find the calendar and buy or Esther, you may have it. You send it. Do you have the. I'm wondering if Jill came because she was confused. It was she too. It was, committee. She got confused on which night was what. No, it was two gentlemen. It was not, there wasn't a Jill. It was two oh. men. Darn. Okay. Uh, I wrote down two names, Courtney and James. I don't know. Yeah. But that's the first or last name. Yeah, that was their first name. Is that a guy? Yes. Yeah, they were. It was two men. Yeah, Courtney was a guy. That's the guy that served on the District Six. I believe he knows Tanya from EFC, but I'm not sure how. So I don't know if he's a USU person or. Um, yeah, I just wondered. Yeah, I was curious about Jill because I know that she, I thought that she had intended to go. She hasn't been able to make my meetings yet either, but she's very active with me on email. So that's good. Actually, there was also a um, guy who couldn't make the meeting, but sent us an email um, talking about, I think more along the lines of what we have with like, the spreadsheet and in the WSU initiatives. So something, some things he mentioned was like replacing city-owned vehicles with electric vehicles, um, installing solar panels on city buildings, um, 
updating building codes uh, and other things to do with like electric vehicles, et cetera. Well, that's good. Even if he couldn't make it, that's good that he was able to contribute. It's like can't or hunger. <laughs> yeah, I remember getting the email too, but I, I don't recall the name. Um, that's all I can't. <laughs> for sure. Um, so was anyone else able? Michael, did you talk about I mentioned that we had met yeah. and then we talked about uh, taking the EFC report and just presenting the highlights to various groups in the city to show what has been done. And, and as Jane mentioned, uh, it's, it's a good roadmap and there's some really worthwhile things in there that we can um, use to try to get more act, interest and engagement. Part of that too, we started to create a spreadsheet. I think we got that, but we started a spreadsheet of potential groups that we might speak to. That is something that we could potentially share with Nina so that we could fill in um, additional ones from other ideas from the from the from the board. Um, so that if you have an idea of a place, maybe we should go and talk about the EFC report and what we're trying to do with the sustainability board at the board out there. Let us know. Um, and always, it's it's a great idea to loop me into, um, you know, conversations like this, just so I know what's going on and I can pass information around. Um, that's always, it makes my life easier. <laughs> and we're probably going to need your help, too, because knowing who within the city and how we're supposed to handle any type of communications mm -hmm. coming out as well. Right. That's why I'm here. <laughs> so, um, so that's like, we, you know, we only, only had, what, a half an hour initial conversation so it wasn't needed as much but you know as we start to ramp this up more and have more regular meetings then um you know, to your point a couple of meetings ago we don't want to overtax you in terms of having you at every single meeting but on the other hand making sure that you are you know, given the notes from those meetings or any communication so that you can stay appraised right. and it doesn't have to be super detailed um just highlights, yeah, so that I'm aware what's going of what's going on, and then if I hear something from my boss or something, I know what's going on. Um, we just we don't want anyone here to be blindsided. Um, oh yeah, just a preemptive like. <laughs> that would be something as we kind of talked about how things are set up. What is the procedure there in terms of keeping in the loop, that type of thing. Um. I mean, so going forward, this this path, past month was um, you know easier because I I did the green space committee because I wanted to keep them in the loop, and then I was able to uh, listen in to the um, energy efficiency and renewables one. Um, but yeah, you know, seven seven groups a month is um, taxing. <laughs> so um, it's it's helpful to you know if we want to post meeting times on the website um send me like the date and time and if you're meeting in person just the location if you're meeting online um send me the link um, i will say that i found out that um, teams has an hour free meetings versus zoom has 40 minutes um, is their free version so i know not everybody likes teams i personally like teams but um, it does allow you a longer um, time um, to talk to people without worrying about having to, you know, do another meeting really quick, um, if that's helpful. How um, many Zoom licenses does the city have? Dozens? Is there a way for us to use that if we need to? Um, I have a Zoom license, so I could potentially set one up if I'm there. Um, I think I, you know, the way it works is I have to be present, like on the on the call the whole time. Or can you I'm switch that over? Sure. Else as a host? Well, at least start it. I yeah. know because because it is um, through the city and there's certain like um, technology rules. I don't think I'm allowed to make somebody else the host who is not within who doesn't have the um, at Wichita.gov domain. Gotcha. Makes it tricky. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good question, though. Good question. Good. So, uh, well, actually, go ahead. We're running the meeting today. Um, 
<laughs> so yeah, just um, you know, send me that in advance if you can. That way I can post it online. We can hopefully get more traction that way. Um, I also have a MailChimp that I send out um, board notices and other information. So I can always do like, here's the upcoming committee meetings um, if I know about them. Yeah. Um, so I can I can send those out, and then we can also promote that um, that Mailchimp sign up on our social media, so that we can say, hey, stay up to date with our um, our sustainability board. Here's how. Um, hopefully, get some more traction there. Um, and, and then after the fact, people that have signed up for the get notification. I mean, I saw that there was a link to sign up to get notifications for the sustainability board when you go to the sustainability. Board. Yeah, that's the Mailchimp. Yeah. Um, so I, I do those e-blasts. Um, so that's how... Um, so I need to sign up because I want to know yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Right now I'm only doing meeting notices, which you guys all get the calendar notifications. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can, I can um, put you guys in the loop there once we start putting more um, substantial content in there. And we can do updates uh, for people as well. Um, you know, just highlighted bullet points of like, here's what we're working on right now, Come join us at the next meeting, um, things like that. So that's not, that's not terribly, um, you know, a heavy lift, um, it's definitely doable. But yeah, just as far, you know, when, when you guys are, are um, getting me notes, like you can just bullets, it doesn't have to be anything formal, like really, really just simple um, stuff. It doesn't have to be like, an essay or like a memo. It's we're not that fancy here. Fair enough. So just kind of highlights of it just so you yeah, can like phrase yeah. it. You can either just be like in an email or if you want to attach a document to whatever is easiest for you. And I'll save them. Um, and um, we do have a shared folder uh, that you guys should have access to. And if not, um, I can send that link again. Um, but I post all of our um, all of our materials in there. So we can have that as well. So if you ever want to go back and say, you know, oh, what was um, transportation committee doing? Um, those notes will be in there. If you can send that again, well, that would be good. Might be a good idea to send that link every time. Every time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just... I mean, really, that would be helpful. Because going back to try to find the right email from Nina that has that link in it is going to be hard. So if yeah. you can just add that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll share it and I'll share it as many times as you guys need me to. Um, I do also recommend um, just bookmarking too. <laughs> um, but I can definitely do that. No worries. There. Um, you have to find the bookmark and depending that's on the true. <laughs> you have. Very true. Um, that's, that's all I have really. I know, Laura, you wanted to go more into the you know, time requirements and the structure and see what's working. Yeah, I guess I'll pose a question with those who have started their committees and, and maybe those who haven't as well yet, but I, I was not here last time because I was finishing a personal trip, but uh, my understanding is that there were some concerns around the time commitment um, of the of having the committees along with, that's right, I don't know. It's mostly me. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, but I wanted to address that because I think, and, and okay, this is, this is my vision, but please all fill in with, with other ideas. Uh, that, yeah, right now we're having monthly meetings at this level, but in the long run, what we can end up doing is having a lot of the work done at the committee level and then meeting here at maybe every other month to every quarter once we brought back a lot of good work from the committees. And then here we're deciding what are we taking up to the city from these committees. Does that make sense? So in the beginning, because we've got to set everything up since we're so new, it's more work on the front end, but my hope, <laughs> if, it, if things function as, as I hope they will over time, that will diminish because again, most of the work's being done at the committee level and they're bringing it up here. That's the goal. Um, does that make sense or any, any feedback or feedback or? I think it's a good way to start. Absolutely. I think it should be the goal. I mean, I think that ultimately we, you know, in two hours, even once a month can't do all of the work that's needed it's got to come really from those committees during you know they're going to sit down and say hey this is really what we'd like to see on the transportation committee or this is or in the transportation side of which or uh, the energy efficiency side that's got to be done and that's also how we drive more community engagement right that it's not just us doing this it's 
us and these folks that are interested in that particular topic area who are communicating to us and the city about, again, these different topic areas. That's my, that's my theory. We'll see if it pans out. <laughs> but that's, the, that's, that's my hope of what, of how this will function over the coming months. For now, we've got to keep these a little bit because we're still figuring it all out and we've got to test the waters a bit. Um, but if by the end of this year, we're able to transform this to in every other month or every quarter, that saves it's kind of on the commitment level. And hopefully it's more effective. There was a big fight, if you remember, about not meeting every month. There was, yeah. So and we then, have to make sure that everybody's aware of what we're doing. Yes. I think, again, it's, it's making sure at the front end, there was no way if we did this every quarter, then we wouldn't have it. I mean, this is not functional, right? I mean, it wouldn't, it's, you know, it takes a while to make sure that everything is up and running. And we spent a, a month on our, one of our meetings on bylaws, right? So, great. <laughs> you know? But if we can get to a point where we're functioning more, you know, as a, efficiently and as a well-oiled machine of committees bringing up, if these are really the focal points that we want to go to. And it could take a while to get there, but that's ultimately, I think, where we should be at some point. One of the things I was wondering about is when we do have these committee meetings, uh, what, what kind of notes are we obliged to keep to share back with you or whatever? Um, you don't have, it's not like you need to take minutes. It's, um, it's probably recommended that you take some notes just to share um, with the group or to send over an email. Um, but it's really at your discretion as far as what you feel is um, the most important um, takeaways. So I have notes that I shared back with the people with the committee mm -hmm. so that they have some. No, I'm just wondering if there was a formal requirement is what I was asking. No legal requirement for that. There is for this meeting to have a, have a record. Um, and I, but I do like what you just said, Lori, that for the sake of the committee and having the um, the record of it, when the, maybe the committee, someone remember something that was said that wasn't put into the notes that might be relevant, mm -hmm. just having that record is important. But if there's no legal reason for us, it's, it's more from an organizational point. Mm -hmm. Is uh, it very abbreviated for me to say? Send me as much or as little as you like. <laughs> I will sort through it either way. I think too. So let, another question I think came up in the last one was, you know, what are the committees supposed to do with those of you who did meet? And I missed I missed some of the recording, so forgive me on that. But what was your overall experience with your committees? Those who did was it that people were really just sharing ideas about what they'd like to see in the community? How did you outline your your first meeting with folks? Meet you, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we had an outline of things that we were going to look at, and we have started doing that. Um, we've got one that's immediate, which is trash, um, but we've also got compost that we're looking at ways to do, um, but this trash is going to be really heavy for a while, so since that seems to be more immediate, I think we're we'll focusing on that first, okay. franchising trash. Okay. That's the policy that we're, we're eventually be starting to figure out a policy that you want to elevate to here that we would then potentially bring up to the state for a new ordinance. Okay. That's it. To me, that sounds kind of perfect. And that, that type of, um, and that's coming from figuring out, okay, on your committee, what do the people on the committee care the most about? What do they think is going to be the most effective? And then trying to create some language around what would an ordinance or a policy look like that we could then to the city. Anybody else who, ours was a little bit different because it was three board members and we were talking yeah, about communication. Sure but, um, but in terms of some of the other folks that maybe have already reported on their committee, um, you said energy efficiency. Yeah, so again, ours was really just more discussion about the parameters. Again, we were working off a list that was really focused on what we could do within city operations and our community members came thinking this was about neighborhoods and communities. So we we really sort of had to spend the bulk of our time kind of clarifying and going through that. Okay. I think they, they, one of the 
um, sticking points that I recall from that too was um, focusing on low income neighborhoods <coughs> and how do we how do we help those who have a high energy burden um, you know among all the other all the other stuff um, I met with um, a couple people from um, Green Space. Um, you know, there were a lot of ideas thrown around, but there wasn't necessarily one thing sort of put forward as like the main um, priority. Um, so it seemed more of an idea generation time than um, strict prioritization. So um, there's a lot we could we could do uh, within what I was given um, based on you know feasibility. Um, so I think it might take um, some going back to see, uh, maybe open it up to some more people and see what else, uh, because it is hard when you're just talking to you know, a couple people to really know, are, are they representing the whole community? We want to make sure we get a variety of voice, voices in here too. Um, and so trying to figure out how we engage um, people a little bit more. You know, we, we discussed earlier about um, drawing some topics on forum, um, which is the city's um, uh, platform online to engage um, people and um, seeing what people's priorities are there. So there's a few different ways you know, we can tackle that with a number of topics and projects, um, but that might be something that um, maybe we do sooner rather than later and get a, a host of different um, um, you know, short-term projects going. That'd be great. I mean, uh, I think maybe doing another call to for potential committee members might be a good idea. Look pretty young and, and uh, how many people came to your story? I've had a consistent group of five. Five. Um, we have skipped this four one time and then three and then the fourth person has changed out. Okay. Uh, and there's another person that intends to go. So we got committees up to like, what do we say before, six to eight people maybe? Something like that. That's probably a nice size. We're getting a good sampling of, of people in the community, but it's also not too hard to panic. Um, so I, I would recommend us doing at least another, at least one more call. And then of course, us recruiting on our own. If I have eight um, people on the committee. But that's like two that have, I don't, have never seen. Okay. Yeah, so I may or may not be on the committee. Yeah, not me, right? But I mean, you know, it's, yeah. it's hard to schedule stuff. Yeah, and one person who wanted to be there last time, but another person who wanted to be there last time she couldn't be the, there the only other day that the other person. Uh, that's what <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it's always that's how it yeah. goes. But eventually, you'll probably settle into a, a, a date or a day of the month and a time. I'm guessing, but, I don't know. Forget that lays out. We want to see what comes up. Or, and then maybe we will do some data. Any other feedback and from a structural standpoint, or what what could someone like me or Nina, the two of us, you know, do to help support the structure of, of committees for each group? Nina talked about possibly having some meetings somewhere else, or but it was this these meetings. It wasn't a committee meeting we were talking about earlier. Um, yeah, I was just vaguely talking about um, the location for these meetings, not necessarily. We can have that discussion uh, at another time. It's not super pertinent, but um, in terms of either resources or explanation of what the community should be looking at or helping to recruit, what, what kind of things can we do to help support the committees to get them off the ground? more of them off the ground and everyone feeling more confident about running them. Is everyone okay at this point? Did all the committees meet? Mm -hmm. Or there was a couple of them that didn't. There's a few that didn't, so we've got to finish recruiting and close up. Right. Probably why I'm asking the question too, what, what can we do to help? Where, where are we recruiting? Where are we letting people know about it? Um, I've been doing it through social media, through the city's page. We've gotten, I mean, how many people overall 
all of the committees, would you say came through that venue? I would, I would probably say a dozen and there's some overlap because some people wanted to join multiple. Whether or not those people have shown up is another story. Yeah, that's, yeah. Part of yeah, that's always part. Of yeah, I would do at least one and maybe two more calls to action on that. So you never know when someone's going to see the social media posts or not see them. Um, and then I think it does behoove us as the committee heads to do a little bit of our own recruitment as well of, of folks. I think about for ours, for example, some of the finding some people who are in PR that we might bring into the, into the mix, that type of thing to help us through. I wonder if, um, you know, because EFC has been such a, a large part in this and with the report, I wonder if they would um, promote um, committee engagement or um, you know, talk with colleagues or um, other people to see if anyone's interested. So there could be some connections there. I can talk to um, Tanya. It would be interesting finding out from Jeff and Tanya each subsection that they did with the different policies and projects that could be done, do they have a specific staff member who worked on each of those or how did they, how did that function? Because um, it wouldn't be bad necessarily to bring at least maybe, maybe not as a committee member, but someone who could come to speak to the committees once in a while about why or how, how they came up with those. I know they, they pulled a lot of information from the city as far as, um, you know, um, what, what we've done in the past and things like that. Um, you know, they did a lot of research as to um, other municipalities and sustainability offices elsewhere. So I'm not sure if it was um, certain people on certain topics or um, I'm not sure how that developed. Um, yeah. Ask them about it and see how how that was done, because that might be helpful to us too as we're going through. And I would say for everyone who's on a committee that's a topic area, use that really strongly as a resource in terms of the different ideas that they've, they've already done a lot of research for us. So prioritizing which ones we think are the most important to push which thought forward first, that is a really good resource for us. Um, yeah, I will kind of say, you know, as much as I can, I'm happy to come to different meetings too. I stay at praised and you insane a little bit um, <laughs> a little bit not all of them not every month but kind of come in you know and help and whatnot as I can as well a little bit a little bit but I do think if you're going to be kind of the leader you need to get in there a little bit as much as you're able to I might be toting Johnny along with me <laughs> but I will try so keep me appraised too and as I'm able to I'll pop in the meetings but again not every month but <laughs> people also do one thing i've been doing a lot lately is research on other climate action plans and figuring out what the process looks like to get that put together because that's something that i think we all want to see so i would keep that in the back of your minds when you're meeting with committees of you know, i think one of the first steps to identify or to making a plan happen is to have targets, set those goals. You know, I know like I'm in the middle of our sustainability reporting right now. And so, um, you know, that was a big piece of the EFC thing. Um, so, you know, do we have energy targets? Do we have, um, do we have a idea of how um, extreme weather would affect us? Things like that. Um, what do we need resilient? So I know we're thinking a lot of short-term stuff right now too, um, but as, as I put things together, just be thinking about, um, you know, what science-based targets do we want to identify? Um, what does the community think of those targets? Then how can we put those in place or pu publish them? Um, because I think I kind of put something together before, Summer? Yeah. Next summer, like 2023. If we're doing a comprehensive plan, it's, it's going to be a huge, yeah. huge piece of 
No, I was just yeah. clarifying. <laughs> like next month, next right. summer. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think 2023. So no, I'd be working eight hour yeah. weeks. Um, <laughs> no, I think you know. I want to. I want to see it started on this now and think about it throughout this entire process that we're doing all this work because um, I think we we would like to have it in place before next summer. Um, not only you know because helped our scores, but because it. Yeah. Um, so it is changing faster and faster. They're not keeping. Right. So I'm I'm working on putting together like a skeleton idea of how we do this. Um, yeah, do you have any resources? There there are there are, there is help out there, right? For people who actually work on these. The cities. Other yeah, other yeah. Cities. Yeah. You know, consultants who do this as a living uh, for cities that type of thing. Uh, yeah, and I've talked to uh, I haven't talked to any consultants, but I have talked to uh, Lawrence and uh, Douglas County because they. I've recently done one. Um, they did a lot of public engagement. Um, and I think they were bringing, the website said they were bringing it to their council, I believe, or yes, um, this spring. So I'm not sure if that's still on track, but I know they were looking for a lot of community input before they put anything on the books. That's still Jasmine. I know they've had a lot of changes because there's, I think they're splitting their, their joint office. And so, I'm in an energy project to work with them on that. Um, might look at bringing some of their expertise in. Yeah, I've talked to um, yeah, I talked to Dorothy yeah. a little bit. Um, so, and and there's plenty of um, examples. Um, you know, Kansas City has sort of a regional plan. Um, St. Louis has a pretty comprehensive plan. So I'm trying to trying to keep us like Midwest, so that our goals aren't like we're, we're like oh well that that's not relevant our political climate is not like that that's not going to work so or look at home the city maybe the city maybe i don't know if they have one or not but that's I'm another not sure i'll take a look look at Oklahoma city. yeah i'll check i'll check the plains um areas you know this um we'll see said so similar Similar issues, similar political climates, that type of thing. And I did mention earlier that um, Wichita Transit put together a transit uh, climate action plan. It's pretty. It's a little bare bones right now because um, there's a lot of um, additions and work that needs to be done. Um, but it's definitely something that we can incorporate in. Um, and you know, we can use a similar structure to um, because ours will be a little more comprehensive. It's going to be lot we're gonna have to add a lot into it um it won't just be like the simple sections that they have so more more to come in the next few months on that that's um one of my projects that i'm hoping to uh guys out with Oklahoma city does not have climate mitigation for greenhouse gas they don't have them what about tulsa tulsa or like lincoln on the Nebraska, Nebraska. 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 Tulsa Climate Action Plan even comes up in Google search. So, City of Tulsa and Urban Climate Change Research. Tulsa does. Yeah. yeah, Tulsa does. So, it's probably more of a. It is, but it's also, is Oklahoma City or Tulsa more comparable to Utah? Or... The city is quite a bit bigger. bigger. Tulsa oh, City is sorry. bigger than us. It's just directly south of us, though. Correct. I mean, directly south. I work here. So, but Tulsa, I mean, Tulsa's smaller. So we kind of fall in the middle of those two. But I would, yeah, maybe Omaha. Um, incomparable. Yeah. Um, and so I will throw that in share folder um but do you want our feedback too like as we have time do you want us to help you with that or is that um, something that's more your i'm not sure yet I'm, I'm sort of feeling it out um because i'm i'm really new at this too so um, trying to put together an outline of what we need first you know public input staff input all of that what the process is and then figure out who we need for each 
um, step and what, what assistance will be required, but um, not there yet. So I'll let you guys know for sure. Omaha has nothing. <laughs> That's good. That means Wichita's getting out ahead of some of these. They just called upon them in the community to set. Um, it will be actually created by this board, probably in conjunction with staff. But the committee will help generate some of those targets um, by getting that uh, community input. So it's 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 a little bit of both. Yes. Yeah. How is it there, right? I mean, so we have a target that's based off of science and whatnot, but also how do we? What does the community want to see happen to reach? Right. In what areas? I think it's, what, if I'm understanding yeah. right. What I don't expect is that the committees will be responsible for writing everything out. Um, they'll be behind the ideas and the goals and the projects, but the actual putting everything together will probably be done by staff while informed by this board and by the committees. So, the, uh, there, there won't be fragmented action. Committees are expected to create ideas and investigate those ideas rather than implement, say, single hall, single uh, trash hauler contracts. Or you're not we supposed can't. to. Do, really yeah, we can't. We're 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 to inform city policy. And in 2023, not. Before. I think I think there's kind of a two tier thing. Yeah, it's two prong. Immediate, immediate thing. So, for instance, what Lori was talking about in her committee that they've already identified, and, and are creating the language for potential or an ordinance that could be implemented anytime, right? Not not till 2023, but next month, right? In theory, <laughs> um, it won't be next month, but in theory, right? Yeah. So, so there'll be immediate things that the board is pushing forward that could happen sooner, but the overall big plan to get us to, so let's say I'm, I am fully making this up, but let's say that the, the climate action plan was to cut Wichita's emissions by half by 2035, right? Um, the plan would inform how we get there on that longer, longer term goal. Does that make sense? And is there any commitment by the city to respect or fund any, any? those issues? Well, I'm not sure at this point, but if we have a strong argument for why and we have projects that are supported by the community and we know this is what the community needs, then we can make that argument to receive funding. But we need to have that argument and we need to have it backed by community before we're going to receive it. It's kind of, yeah, it's it's not ideal. It'd be great if we had a pot to just work from, but right now we're developing the plan. We're gonna move forward and we're going to make that argument that this is necessary and receive funding. So funding for policy changes or a combination or of yeah. Essentially. So look at it as kind of a two-tiered strategy, right? The short-term things that we can advise on now versus the longer term that's going to create the bigger impact over the coming years. That's the two sides of this. Long-term can be very long. No, well, I don't mean, I'm hoping. And at the right. same time, climate is changing. That's right. It really is an urgency. It really is an emergency. So we can wait for a long time. We well, don't. We have started. Them. Some other cities haven't even started. Apparently, Apparently not. No, I mean, I, I mean, I think, I think there's 
So to Jane's point, obviously I think everyone in this room can appreciate the timeline, right? That, mm -hmm. that we want to get the stuff done sooner rather than later. We don't want this to be, we don't want long-term to be another 50, 100 years, right? Or even five years, mm -hmm. like. But there is no 50 years if nothing happens. Right, so so that, so that we don't even want it to be five years, right? But but we've got to do the right things to get the steps in the row and get the right constituents behind us and the money and the you know, to be able to do the things we want to do. So. We need to do this as quickly as we can, but we also have to be cognizant of the realities of, of, of how long of an actual action plan is going to take. Hopefully, like you're saying, you want to have this be able to be something that should be implemented by next summer. In the meantime, let's work on shorter term wins that we can do as well. So for instance, what, what Lori was talking about with her committee and others. So think about it from both sides of that coin. If we can do things like what Lori's working on now, um, at least that gets us moving forward, right? And mm -hmm. sets there's momentum there. It gives us some plausibility. I, mean, I think you to were the point where we're trying to say right. we've already got right. this right. phrase, right. but right. skin in the game. Yeah, exactly. we've got yeah. show works. Yeah. And that's just going to further our, our argument. Right. But yeah, just because we don't have the plan now doesn't mean we're not doing any. We are we're doing things. It's just not in a comprehensive little package. I like the plan yeah. because you, do, you need to have. The one-offs are good, and when we want those, right? To your point about showing that we can do it and showing there's wins. But really, if we want to make a concerted real difference, it's going to get Wichita's emissions emissions down by X percent by X date. There has to be that comprehensive plan to get there. Otherwise, it won't happen. We're spinning our wheels, right? So I'm glad to hear, because I, I, I didn't know, I'm glad to hear that, that we're starting that process of an actual plan. That's awesome. Um, and happy to help where it's needed. <laughs> and uh, you, you said you were working on the sustainability, some kind of sustainability report right now. Is that with the ACEE? Uh, CDP. CDP. Okay. Um, ACEEE is, I guess, how they refer to themselves. Um, they are not doing um, reporting this year. Um, COVID threw off their schedule, so they will be opening up reporting at the end of the year. So we'll get a scorecard um, in 2023. Um, but the CDP scoring um, is open now and closes towards the end of July. So I've been working on gathering data for that. So we maybe. go up from there too. We, we have a D or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a goal for each of the subcommittees or committees would be to come up with something again, like what Lori's doing, a an ordinance or a policy that over the say over the summer could be looked at by the council. That would be that was a short timeline. I'll just I'll just tell you that any any sort of ordinance if we're bringing it before council to do it this summer, that's a very very short time frame. I fall. <laughs> <laughs> when it, you, you guide us in terms of the the timeline, but but to be working, let's say let's say working on it over the summer in your committees <laughs> that can be brought to the you know the fall or whatever timeline makes sense on that. And it, yeah, it really just depends on how complex it is, yeah. and then that we can present it. And we'll, and we've got Nina to guide us on how the city functions, right? So we'll have to understand and be respectful of that. And, um, and but we'll bring in staff when needed. Um, you know, we've, we've sort of done that already. Um, we've looked at some some trash stuff um, recently. So we're, we're getting people involved. Um, but once things are identified and prioritized, then we can really say, hey, these guys want you here and involved um, on the staff side. So. Why don't we, we, when I officially set the goal of by the end of the summer, so say the August meeting where all, all of the committees that are topical are bringing to the floor one or two ordinances or policies that they'd like to see brought to the city, city council. Those are, you know, there's no real cost associated with them. So while we're working with no budget, that's, I mean, we're working with a probably more sympathetic council than we were before. This is a good opportunity to really bring some good policies to the floor. Yes, sir. And hopefully those can be then kind of looped into what you're working in a greater way. Yeah, exactly. A lot of these uh, policies or goals are all going to be sort of funneled into this, uh, these mitigation and adaptation plans. So we're, we won't be starting from scratch. We're going to be using this work that we're all doing to form the, the plans. Um, any other questions, comments, thoughts? 
from Zoom I'm as well. Jennifer just got here and she can't either can't hear or she can't talk. I don't know which. Uh, Shoot. <laughs> she can hear. She can hear. Sorry, <laughs> Uh, this is Tammy. Just one thing. I think I thought I'd send it to Nina to share with the group, but we uh, Evergy did just approve rebates for uh, residential and commercial customers for the installation of EV chargers in Kansas. So for those of you on the uh, the transportation um, committee, I I'll send that information out to Nina to put it on the shared site that gives you the details. But um, that would help, you know, with the occur in encouraging EV adoption, both Again, residential and then commercial fleet rebates as well. So those, that's fairly new. So I'll, I'll get that information out to everybody. Yeah, thank you, Tammy. I um, it's, I know you sent that to me a while ago. and So I will um, share oh, that. And I wasn't even sure I sent it. So you could have denied that and I would have never known. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to that front too, I mean, it's kind of a question for Nina, but you know, along with what Evergy's doing, it, is there a plan within the sphere? Well, there was part of the our climate action plan of how we're going to help have more EV stations you know, commercially. Um, yes. So, I mean, there's a lot of ideas being floated around right now. One of the big things, you know, we've kind of got our, our finger on the pulse of uh, BIL funding. So that is an area uh, bipartisan infrastructure law or the IIJA, there's like two names for it. It's it's um you know the, the the sum of money that was essentially passed for a large number of projects. So a lot of those haven't opened up yet, but we've identified several areas where we would want to apply for funding. Um, I mean, we've looked at tree planting. We've looked at um, different transportation improvements. I know transit is pursuing the low and no emissions grant. Um, so we're trying to get things moving as soon as, um, those open up. Um, so with that, we're hoping that that opens the door for, uh, uh, electric vehicles. Um, I know KDOT has opened up some funding, um, for highway corridors. Um, that one we don't quite fit into because we'd be putting it more in the metro area versus, um, they want it more, more rural. But you know, the things like that are too. right. And then with Evergy um, rebates, you know, we use that sort of on a commercial side um, as well to help um, you know transition our fleet um, when the time comes. It's a huge, it's gonna be a huge expense. Um, but um, we're, we're pursuing funding to make that to make it easier and make it happen sooner. So I'd like to point out that the Wichita Public Schools can implement electric buses if they have electric charging stations. And they have let these go. He said they still didn't have grants for that. Will there be grants for those 50,000 students for electric charging stations? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what, um, what's coming down the pipeline on the federal side, um, but if, if they've sort of slipped through the cracks from the electric bus program, then it could be something that comes down from um, state. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, or, you know, potentially with, with Evergy's uh, rebates as well, it could be to make it affordable uh, for them, but I'm, I'm not sure what their other options are regarding funding. Not really my. I don't know if that would be the city or the school board, I'm not sure. It's not city. city. Yeah, it's, it's all, it's completely separate. Yeah, with all, and it was actually you know, some, some towns, the school district and the city work together. That's not true in Wichita. And it would be very valuable to have that connection. I'm not sure that's anything that we can do. We can invite electric charging stations to do what they work for. We could do that. 
then, yeah, maybe that's something that would be under Wampa's purview. I'm not sure. Um, Research on that. There's no real advocate for going to the bus, but it's not very. I know they can't on that has spoken. That would be excellent. Yeah. Wonderful to do it. Probably the future is that. The question is, and how long? When does the future get here in regards to that? Faster. And if they were, if the buses were owned by USD 259, would have applied for those. Yes, grants. but they're not. But they're not. So who owns the bus? That's what good luck with the contractor. Is this their private company? They're eligible for the VW. Ah. Yeah. Well, I think they are, could get like 20%. Yeah, but not, yeah. not enough. For them, that was really sad. This is Tammy. I've worked with another school district in the state looking at electric buses, and most of those contractors they lease the buses. They don't. They still don't own them. And we were working with a lease company, and the the cost of the electric bus is three times the cost of the traditional bus today. So even they couldn't get to a place where it made economic sense, um, given the cost. As they are at this at this point, yeah. So, but the reality is, these are leased buses. They can get electric buses; they just can't charge them. Well, in this case, they couldn't afford them. The lease, the busing companies couldn't afford to to offer them as an option. The people who lease the buses, who own the buses that gets leased, can't afford. Is what she's saying. They have electric buses, but the school district can't charge them from charging stations. So that's the obstacle. In Wichita. The, the 50,000, you know, Wichita is a very large school district, yes. No, I'm just saying, so, because what Tammy's saying is that in the example that she experienced, they couldn't, the, no one in this scenario could afford the electric buses, but I'm okay. saying, here in Wichita, you're saying that they can, or that they're they they're can, available. They can get them through their leases. But the problem is that they can't charge the electric buses. So that's the limit. Might be chicken and egg there. No, the the obstacle first. is there are no charging stations. And then you run across a grant, yeah, you get charging stations. That is something we'll keep our eyes on. We'll keep our eyes on that. We're always looking at different opportunities. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I think we'll probably call it for this evening um, and we'll adjourn, but um, we'll reconvene here in another month and we're hearing more about how the committees are going. And so let's let's make it our goal to have a really strong ordinance or policy coming out of each of the topical. Um, committees that can be presented to the be by fall and we'll go from there. Is there a date for the next meeting? Yes, the next meeting is June 22nd at 4 30.